Today's video is brought to you by The Ridge Wallet, ridge.com slash pipnight. The Ridge is a quality, minimalistic front pocket product designed to upgrade from the old bulky wallet. The Ridge is slim, RFID blocking, holds up to 12 cards and room for cash. It also has over 30,000 five-star reviews. The Ridge Wallet comes in a whole range of styles, including carbon fiber, forged carbon, titanium, and many other styles to suit your needs. Ridge also offers other great accessories like phone cases, bags, mobile charging, knives, and a lot of other great quality products. Take advantage of the free shipping so you can get it fast, free returns if you don't like it, and it comes with a lifetime guarantee. Get 10% off today with free worldwide shipping and returns by going to ridge.com slash pibnight. That's right, ridge.com slash pibnight and use code pibnight, link in the description. Thanks Ridge for the channel sponsor and to all those who have purchased their products. What's up is you for today's video with my full higher special event stat team, Generation 8. Okay, this is the final one, people. We've done all the highest ones. Maybe you want to see all the lowest ones too. Let me know in the comment section if you'd like to see that. It's up to you, people. If you enjoy the theme teams, people, please drop a like on the video. I'd very much appreciate that. And let's get into it. So the first battle we have is against Drake. These battles were both done on my Twitch. If you want to check my live streams out and stuff on Twitch, link is in the description there. Thank you to all the people who have come over already. Okay, so we have a Mantine lead here. As soon as I see Mantine, I'm like, oh, great. The last battle I had with a Mantine, right, it went for ages, so I was hoping they weren't running like a stall except so we got our all beetle as the lead here all beetle's got the frisk ability and we can see a wakeham berry so like okay wakeham berry this could be a sweeping set so this is a trick room a bulky uh set with bug buzz and throat spray we've got our uh, psy shock and giga rain so it's like a mixed sweeper with the psy shock there works really really nice a great trick room pokemon so we've got the man time going for the rain dance unfortunately for the man time i'm going to be running trick room so all the man times our little strategy there is going to go out the window now i need to take the man time out before it actually takes me out obviously under the rain it's going to be hitting like very very uh powerful like water type moves so I'm going to go for a Bug Buzz there. Obviously, it's not very effective, but I did that deliberately to raise my special attack with the Throat Spray. Throat Spray, um, after using sound base move, uh, does that uh, plus one in special attack, and it's very, very nice. So I'm going to be able to live that Air Slash. They didn't use a Water-type move, and I think a Water-type move would have done a little bit more in the rain there. So uh, it wouldn't have taken me up, but, uh, you know, Orbital's has got that nice special defense, obviously being on this tank, which helps. So going for the Psy Shock on Mantine, his defense is nowhere near as good as his bulky special defense, and Mantine is going to go down. So that's going to give it a really nice lead there. And we've got a couple of turns of our Trick Room in the back too, which will be very helpful. A lot of the Pokemon on this team are, you know, kind of slow. Speaking of slow Pokemon, unfortunately, my Trick Room is going to get wrecked by this Copperaja going for the Iron Head. Now, I had no moves to hit Copperaja with, so I just went for a stab uh, Bug Buzz and hope for the best to get some damage off of it. It wasn't too bad because it actually did nearly half health, so... You know what? I was actually really happy with that. We took out the Mantine and put a big dent in Copperaja. So uh, the rain is going to snop. Not that it really mattered too much. I think it was really only there for the Mantine. So we got. I think we got one more turn of the Trick Room left. And uh, I thought, I might as well take out this Copperaja. You know, I've got Focus Mist. This is the special set. I think I've mixed things up a little bit between a few of them. So, obviously, uh, Zamazenta has been on a lot of these teams as a Zacian. So, you know, that's how the cookie crumbles, unfortunately. Maybe next time in Gen 9, I might leave out the ledger. I'm not sure. All right, so I went for a Focus Mist, and it missed. Uh, we got a high horsepower from the Copperaja. Not doing a lot of damage because of that plus one in defense. And, obviously, Zamazenta is, you know, very, very... Uh, you know, bulky too. So going for another focus miss here. I was wondering, are they going to swap now they've seen the focus miss? They didn't stay in. Uh, they actually did stay in, but they got a quick claw and a high horsepower on top of that. So like, man, are you kidding me? So they outspend me, which is pretty nice. I actually run quick claw in my Copper Archer too for a bit of fun. So unfortunately, focus miss misses twice in a row. I'm starting to get a little bit scared here. Is it going to keep missing? And then is Copper Archer going to get like a maximum load of quick claws against me? But thankfully, uh, lucky third one it took the Copper Archer out. So that was good. I took a lot of unnecessary damage from high horsepower then, which kind of sucked. But, you know, at least I had the plus one to defense, right? So, the next Pokemon we're coming in is the Chandelure. So, it's like, okay, this isn't the easiest Pokemon in the world to swap in again. So, I'm going to swap it out, and I'm going to go into my 115 special defense, which is my Zayson. Now, Zayson has a uh, has a Soul Fest, so I thought, okay, I can live this, and then I can get a plus one on attack, and then go for a bite, right? 
they instead of going for Flamethrower or Fire Blast, they went for Inferno. Now, Inferno is pretty dodgy actually at 50, but it does actually, when it lands, it gives you a burn. So it's kind of really bad for physical attackers, right? So I go for that bite on the Chandelure, almost taken out there, and I didn't get the flinch, which I wanted to get. And now we got Inferno landing. Of course it does. And that does not too much damage, but it did burn me. So my physical Zaceon set, right, is pretty much going to be shut down here. This is just a troll set, right, normally. Uh, these Pokemon are very good. So I have to sort of like uh, tone them down a little bit and nerf them. So we got Iron Head, Bite, Thunder Fang, and Imprison. Yes, it gets Imprison, which is really cool. Basically, with Imprison, it's better on the Crown set, right? Um, if you've seen like a Behemoth Blade coming, you could Imprison them and then... You know, they get salty and decent. It's quite fun. Okay, so the Chandelure is obviously going to go down. They only had a little bit of health left, and that was pretty good. So we've got a pretty commanding lead at the moment. We've taken three Pokemon down. We've only lost all Beetle. However, Zacian is actually pretty... It's crippled, right? So we've got Toxicroak coming in here. I was thinking I might be able to get around Toxicroak with some Iron Head flinches. Um, that could work really nicely. Even though I'm burned, I've still, you know, I'm still going to hit pretty hard. And usually Toxicroak is, uh, you know, is sweeping. It doesn't really have a lot of bulk to it. Unless it's like a really, really slow run, right? So go for the Iron Head. It does like, uh, it's a three-hit KO still. And uh, we got the Poison Jab from Toxicroak. And Toxicroak is going to take me out there after the uh, burn damage on Zacian. Unfortunately, but you know, I got an iron head off and that's pretty good. I've done some good damage to it. Did a pretty good job there. If I wasn't burned, that uh, that toxic rope was gone. That wouldn't have been living that, uh, you know, definitely not living that um, iron head. I nearly said, uh, I nearly said a signature move then, but I forgot once you take the, you know, when you take the sword off, it changes its form. So we're sending in the Zama Zenner again and we're sending the Toxic Rope to the moon. And it actually doesn't take it out, which sucks. I actually didn't really have a lot to uh, do to it, uh, apart from Moonblast, right? So we got the Drain Punch from the Crow Gunk, or the Toxic Rope. I always get Crow Gunk and Toxic Rope mixed up. Like, that is one Pokemon line I always, like, I think of, um, I don't know why, but for some reason I think it's Crow Gut as the evolved Pokemon and Toxic Rope as the baby one. I don't know why I do that. Is there a Pokemon you guys do with that? I'm not sure why I do it. Okay, so we got Toxicroak is going to get taken down by the second move blast. That's good. Unfortunately, it didn't do a lot of damage with that plus one in the fence. It didn't get a lot of sustain back from Drain Punch either, so it's going to be going down. Okay, so we got Milotic. I was like, okay, I hope this isn't a Dynamax Milotic because I hate versing Dynamax Milotic. It's so bulky. It's got good offense as well. So the best I can pretty much do here is go for a Solar Beam or Moon Blast. Um, obviously, you can't Dynamax uh, Zamazena and stuff like that, so it'd be nice too because then I could use like Solar Beam right away. But uh, obviously you can't, and uh, we're going to be going for a move blast instead. I don't really want to be waiting an extra turn against a Milotic, which most definitely is going to be able to set up like a, um, you know, a Hydro... It's probably have Hydro Cannon and Skull. Did I say Hydro Cannon? I meant Hydro Pump. Hydro Cannon, Milotic people. Man, that'll be hype. Okay, so we're going to be going for a Focus Miss, not Moon Blast there. I actually went for a Special Defense Drop. Then I was kind of worried about competitive, right? If we got a competitive boost, it would hit a lot harder. So then we have the... Um, that was really strange. I was like, does it have Bulldoze or does it have Mud Slap on the Max Quake there? That was very interesting. Uh, the bad thing about that is actually going to raise the Special Defense of the Milotic. So it's like, damn, like, I'm going to have to this, like, really, really hard on the Special side or Physical side. So now we're going to go into Curse Solar. This is a choice Band Cursola, but more on that set as the battle goes on. That was just a little, uh, you know, a little uh, feint swap in there. So we're going to be going back into uh, um, uh, Elder Goss here because Elder Goss um, is pretty bulky and this is a very defensive set. However, I swapped it in to bait out that water type move and it took it really easily. Now, usually most of the time, I'll take a run Ice Beam. So I was like, okay, I should be able to, you know, easily live on Ice Beam and maybe get a Leech Seed up. This had Leech Seed, my favorite healing move, Cotton Guard and Leaf Tornado for a little bit of Axe Hacks. That has 50% chance to drop your uh, accuracy. Now, the only thing I was, once again, I was worried because I was like, oh, I better not do that because Milotic could get a competitive boost and I could be a lot of problem. That's the only thing about dropping, like, the opponent's stats in a bad way, right? Okay, and if they, of course, if they got something like Contrary too, you could be in a lot of trouble. You could be raising those stats, you know what I'm saying? Right, so we got the uh, Ice Beam there, obviously. Um, it's going to turn to Max Hail, and it's going to be Hailing. Funny about that. And so we got some Leaf uh, leaf Seed damage there, and we got some Hail damage, which is really, really nice. So um, Minotic, obviously, is going to be running out of the Dynamax too, which is really good. Now, it's yet to be established whether they have Recover or not. Most Minotic sets have Recover, so I kind of want to take it down to a low amount of damage. Bring Curse Solar in and just go for the head smash. This is a physical Curse Solar as well, which is really nice. Um, I've got Regenerator on this set on the Elder Goss too, and I just made it a bulky um, 
defensive wall, which actually worked fairly well in a lot of battles. Once I got the Cotton Guards up, Cotton Guard gives you plus three in defense, right? It was super bulky because I was running a max health and max special defense there. Now, the item I had on there was a Rocky Helmet too. So going for, uh, that was the actual... Uh, uh, Leaf Tornado there, and I didn't get a drop, which is really nice, but Minotic has a berry. It's got the Citrus Berry. It's so like, okay, maybe it does have Recover. Maybe it just has the Citrus Berry as a recovery. I would love that so much, because then we won't have, like, 50,000 turns of, like, you know, Minotic using Recover before I can take it out in one shot. Right. Okay, so getting some more Leftover Recovery. Uh, it's not Leftover. Some Leech Shade Recovery uh, from that Minotic. Now it's going to go for a final Ice Beam. And that is going to be enough to take me out. But that's all good, though. I got around the Dynamax, and I did some good damage from Milotic there. So it definitely was nice. So now I'm thinking, okay, it's in range. If I go for the Choice Banded uh, uh, Head Smash on the Curse Solo, I should be able to take it out. Unfortunately, this thing actually learns no good uh, Ghost-type moves. Uh, the only move it gets is Astonish. And let me tell you, guys, Choice Band Astonish is nothing to ride home about. And you might get a flinch, but we're not under Trick Room, so... I'm going to go for most powerful attack with Head Smash. we got Head Smash, Throat Chop, Leech Life. And yeah, it's pretty bad, right? I just want to run a fun set. So Milotic's going to be going for a Scald there. I was like, please don't burn, please don't burn. It doesn't do too much damage to me. Head Smash is going to connect, and Milotic is not going to be living that one. So that was really, really good there, connecting that Head Smash. If I miss or if I got burned, it was questionable where I was going to be able to take it out, right? So taking a little bit of recall there from the Head Smash, I mean... You can run Head Smash, Choice Band, Hustle on normal Core Solar. That hits like an absolute truck, right? But on Curse Solar, there's no stab, right? So Riddler Boom's going to come in here. They've got a shiny. They've got that grassy surge there. You guys got your shiny uh, you know, shiny starters with the uh, hidden abilities yet? Yeah, let, let me know in the comment section. Uh, now, we've got a seed on this one, which is going to be the grassy seed raising its defense. Now, it's like, okay... I've got some options here, right? Because I've got Perish Body. Oh, the other move I had on this was Self Destruct, which is quite funny because Curse Solar gets Self Destruct. With Choice Band, it hits pretty hard. Now, I thought about contemplating for a Dynamax here. I was like, maybe I should go Dynamax and Leech Life, you know? That'd be quite good. But then I won't get any, like, sustain, and Rillaboom's going to outspeed me. It's probably going to use Knock Off anyway, and, you know, Perish Body will kick in. So that could be quite good for me, right? Because all i got to do then is stall out those last couple of turns. So it's going to go for the uh, Knock Off there, which I thought it was, and Perish Body is going to kick in. So now it's made a contacting move me. Perish Body is basically like Perish Song, right? And uh, it's going to knock on my Choice Band. They're probably like, why is this kid running a Choice Band for? But they found out the powerful Kasala with Head Smash, right? So, my last Pokemon is the Alcremie we got. Now, what is this flavor? Firstly, we got Strawberry. I can see the little strawberries there. I think I'm going to throw it out there and say it was my Matcha G-Max one. Okay, so speaking of G-Max, we're going to go straight for the G-Spot. This is going to be a big old birthday cake. Now, what I was thinking, right, this has got Grassy Surge, right? Um, you know, any Grass-type moves are going to be hitting pretty hard. I'd say if they've got something like Drum Beating or Wood Hammer, it's going to pop off, right? So I've got to be able to lift those turns. So go for the uh, Dynamax here. This set, you don't really get to see much in this battle. I'll explain it in the second one a little bit more. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be going for the Max Guard, right? So I figured, okay, if there's a Perish on the field, all I've got to do, right, is go Max Guard twice. That'll burn up two turns, and then I just got to attack one turn and use G-Max Final. What will that do, right? It'll do a little bit of damage to the real boom, and it'll heal me up too. So we got the drum beating. It does pretty good damage considering I'm running like the old Uber Cake, which is pretty strong uh, in itself. That's going to drop my speed. Doesn't really matter. I'm really slow anyway. And we're going to go Rillaboom. It actually was a two-hit KO against Rillaboom. So I could have attacked twice. I was just a little bit scared it had something like crazy like Woodhammer. And if it creeped me right, I'd be in like a world of pain. You know what I'm saying? So we've got three minutes left on this battle. This has been a very long battle. Um, Perishong has got one more turn left. Uh, on the on the real boom, I can go for a max guard here. You know, I thought about attacking them, then I was like, no, nah, I'm just gonna let them get like, a, I'm just gonna make them salty and go for a max guard again. So that's pretty much it, uh, people. The real boom is gonna go down to the perish body from the Cursola. I'm still trying to work on that sweep, by the way. And uh, that, my friends, is the first battle. I went down to the wire there at the end. Like, I'm sort of looking over it. That Milotic got them back into the game a fair bit. And then uh, the big Uber's cake just took everything up. Thank you for the battle, Drake. Once again, if you do battle me in, uh, you know, if you do see yourself battle me in one of these videos, let me know in the comment section. I'd like to, you know, always know who I uh, 
versus stuff. We both had the Meowth card too. Okay, next battle we got against Dover Roy. I think I said that right. And this was also a very long battle too. I had to do a lot of editing here, man. Usually what I do, I'll tell you guys what I do, because you're probably wondering, right? Uh, we got a Dura Luden lead, and we got the um, Orbital Trick Room setup going on here while I'm talking about this. So in the first battle, what I'll do, right, is sometimes I'll leave a little bit of um, extra camera and stuff in there. That way I can tell you what my moves are. By the second battle, you pretty much know what I'm going to run. So I cut all those sort of pieces out, right? So that's why I, I leave a little bit of un more unedited in the first video. And then the second one, we just you know get straight down to business because we know what's going on, right? So anyway, back to the battles. Thought I'd explain that. Uh, we got the Duralyn. Duralyn's uh, pretty not very bulky at all in the special side. So I thought, okay, let's make use of that. Let's get my throat spray up and let's go for it. So we got the Dragon Pulse there. Dragon Pulse is not going to do very much to me. It's about a three hit KO, and I'm going to go for a double Bug Buzz there. I don't want to really reveal any of my other moves. And uh, Duralyn is going to go down uh, like straight away. Like I body that like super super easily. Next Pokemon we got coming in is the Dragon Pulse. It's like okay, Dragon Pulse. I could go for a Psy Shock here. This should do pretty good damage. I'm thinking like three quarters damage, something like that. It doesn't quite do three quarters. And now we've got a fan of force from a physical uh, Dragon Ball. So it's like, okay, what should I do here? I don't want to let my Orbital go down to that because I could swap that out, maybe set it up like a Trick Room later on. So we're going to be going into my bulky Eldegoss. I was talking about that one before, right? Now, Eldegoss is more... This is actually... More, uh, it's sort of split defensive and special defensive, right? So Phantom Force does a lot of damage, does uh, about three quarters damage. I get a little bit of Rocky Helmet damage. Then I'm going to swap it out, right, and get some Regenerator health back. I might be able to use it later on. So now we're going to go into Zamazena. This thing can take physical hits all day. Uh, max health, max special defense, if I didn't say... Uh, special special attack, if I didn't say that one already. So now Dragapult, instead of attacking me, he's going to go for a U-turn. Maybe they thought, okay, we'll go for a U-turn, take out the Elder Goss. I don't know if U-Turn would have actually taken Elder Goss out there. I think I would have barely lived. So next Pokemon that's going to come in is the Como. Unfortunately for them, I'm running a Pimp Knight meme set. And Moonblast is going to send them to the moon. That four times weakness, man. I, I bet they never ever saw that one coming. I thought they they probably thought, okay, this is just a normal Behemoth Bash set. I'll be able to set up on this. So next Pokemon we got is uh, Dragovish. And man, this is where things start to get nasty. This is just a, such a strong Pokemon, right? So Moonblast, I knew Moonblast wouldn't take it out, but man, it is some pretty solid damage, getting three quarters damage to the Dragovish. So dropping a special attack, it's going to change it so much, guys. And uh, now we got another Scummiest Red, and Zamazena is going to go down. So now I'm thinking, what am I going to swap into this thing, right? I've got my Eldegoss, right? Uh, it doesn't have full health, so I was like, uh, I, oh, I might try it out and see if I can live. Then I'll go for, like, maybe a Leech Seed or something like that. So it's going to go for Scummius Wren, and Scummius Wren takes me out in one shot. I get some Rocky Helmet damage, which wasn't bad. Actually, I was going for a Leaf Storm there. Uh, not a Leaf Storm, a yeah, Leaf Tornado. Getting my Leafs mixed up. And I thought I might barely lift that, but just it's just an overwhelmingly powerful move. Oh, I'm going to go down to it. So going into my Zaxion, this is a very quick Pokemon. Then I found out it was Choice Scarf, and I was like, oh, crap. So down goes my Zaxion, and things are looking really bad here. This is sweeping through uh, vi uh, Vicious Ren. So uh, things are getting very, very desperate. The only way I can possibly lift this attack is if I go into the Big Birthday Cake. Like, this thing has a lot of health, and, you know, you obviously get a lot of bulk from the G-Spot as well. So uh, go for that big old Birthday Cake. Why am I uh, turning into a Big Birthday Cake? I was thinking I can just go for my uh, G-Max Final and take the Dragonfish out. The rest of the team, I wasn't that worried about this is obviously this is the big counter right and a lot of my team wasn't super duper far i mean apart from let's have a look at my team right zama zena wasn't speedy Zacian is pretty much the only speedy one there so fishius ren definitely would have taken me out there if i didn't g max and it does close to three quarters of the big birthday cake i however i'm gonna take out high dragon i mean uh, dragovish man those nicknames messed me up and uh it's gonna go down there getting some nice healing up which is good too so getting well over half health on my uh big al creamy so we've got uh, three Pokemon down. I've lost three as well. I pretty much nearly got... If I didn't have El Cream, I'd say I would have lost that battle there. Um, that was just way too strong. Okay, so in comes Flapple. We are going to have a... I'm guessing a G-Max Flapple. That's what most people run. Now, one thing about Flapple and Appleton, right? I don't know. Do you guys feel me here or not? I wish, right, that Appleton got this G-Max. That makes sense, right? And then Flapple got a different one. Maybe the Apple, like... You know, I don't know. I, re I reckon it'll be nice if they got two different separate ones each. What do you think about that? Maybe 
maybe I'm expecting too much. I don't know. I just I just feel it'd be really cool. So uh, we got the uh, big old apple. It's going to go for a uh, max guard, then a max airstream against my Alcremi. It's not going to do a lot, but actually going to make them a lot faster, though. Not that I don't think it's going to matter too much, right? I think they would have outspeed me anyway. So this is going to be a hustle set there. I'm going to be going for a max starfall. Max starfall does some really good damage, but doesn't take out uh, the big apple ton or uh, flapple. And, uh, yeah, I'm going to be going down uh, to a normal Al Creamy this turn. So getting some uh, well-deserved health back. And we're going to ripen here. What's their pom pomp trap here? I'm not sure what that name even means. Is that a different language or is it a nickname? Someone someone let me know in the um, the comments section there. I always, I always don't get these things. I am really, really tired at the moment, too. So if I've nicknamed a Pokemon or said something silly, make sure you roast me really hard in the comment section. I deserve it. All right, so we got that. A big old uh, grab there. It actually doesn't take me out, which is very, very nice. Dropping my evasiveness there, not that it really matters. Now, this is the problem too. I was like, okay, I've got the right berry here. This is good, right? But it was the berry that actually went off my first nature because I used the mint on this run, right? So it actually confused me. So I'm like, oh no, I'm confused. This is GG. But I get that. I get through that. Go for the draining kiss. And I get some really good damage there. And since it's G-Max, right, I get an absolute buttload of health left um, back there. Now, normally with Draining Kiss, I run Big Root, because that's almost 90% back on the uh, damage that I do, which is amazing, right? Uh, but this time, I ran the Berry. So, swapping out that, I want to get rid of that confusion and going into Orbital. There are some Stealth Rocks on the field, unfortunately, so basically here, Orbital is going to have to take hit. Now, interesting enough for me, they had a Leech Seed on this set. It's not a fully, uh, like, offensive set, but uh, Orbital is going to go down anyway, so that's how the cookie crumbles, right? Now, I was like, okay, I can bring in my El Creamy again. I've almost got full health. I can go for a Draining Kiss here. It's on a low amount of health. Like, what is it going to do to me? It can't go for a Dragon-type move. It's either going to go for Grab Apple, or it's going to go for uh, Acrobatics, which is not going to do much. Anyway, so I decided to go for an Acid Army here. So, like, okay, let's set up against this. I'm very sure they are, you know, they're um, Dragon Bolt's going to come in and go for a, um, a Phantom Force against this. I want to be prepared for that run. So they set a Leech Sheet up, which wasn't a bad play there, because I did actually set up the uh, Acid Armor. But the problem for them now is they're not going to do a lot of damage to me. Like, they're doing nothing. They need a critical hit. So I went for the Draining Kiss there. I thought, I may as well get some health back there. And Leech Sheet is actually... I'm basically going to get the health back they took from me with Leech Sheet, which is pretty Galaxy Brain then. So getting some nice health. We're about three quarters health back there. And we got a Dragapult and one other Pokemon to deal with, right? Which is pretty good. So, unfortunately for them, if you notice, they have, are running a theme team. They're running all Dragon-type Pokemon, so Al Creamy is going to be very, very good against their team. So, now we've got the Dragapult going for the physical, opposite the physical set there. It's going to be going for the Phantom Force. The Draining Kiss is going to miss, and the Dragapult's going to get some uh, more health back with the um, Leech Seed. So, the yeah, Phantom Force is going to hit me not very hard at all, because i got that Acid Armor up. I'm running Max Health. And now we're going to go for the Draining Kiss, and that's going to be way too much for Dragapult to even take. Oh, I, I forgot to tell you guys what this set was. I think I've run it before, right? It's uh, Carmine, Acid Armor, Draining Kiss, and Aromatherapy. I didn't even go for a healing move. I thought... Draining Kiss gets a lot back, and with its nice special attack and Draining Kiss's ability to get a lot of health back, it works really nice. So the last Pokemon is Hydreigon. Now, the, re <laughs> the really bad thing about Hydreigon is it's four times weak to Fairy, so an unboosted, <laughs> an unboosted Draining Kiss is just going to dominate it. And that's pretty much it for the second battle, people. Hope you guys had fun. I was getting really scared with that Dragonfish there, but I did pull back and uh, finish the battle off nicely. Hope you guys enjoyed both these battles. I'll catch you tomorrow for another theme team. It's a really cool one. And I hope you guys have a wonderful day or night where we live in the world. Peace.